Okay. Um, today my uh, talk is about uh, collaborative localization and tracking in wireless sensor networks. Um, so si si since this morning, we have had uh, um, a lot of interesting talks about uh, how, how, what are the challenges in uh, in the geolocation and how we can move forward with different things we can do. So we all understand that the, the localization system has fundamental limits. Fundamental limits in achieving um, accurate performance uh, in localization and to achieve um, like adequate performance for different type of applications. The uncertainty or the errors in, in um, localization are mainly from uh, multi-pass multi propagation, no line of sight, um, and noise. Um, so people have been um, looking at a lot of different ways to improve localization system. Um, the things including uh, using, for example, ultra wideband signal to um, to improve, uh, to have very accurate time of arrival estimation, or use more accurate sensors to have better measurement, or have integrated system to integrate multiple sensors to, for localization, and or many other ways. <coughs> then in this in this research, we looked into two things. One is the collaboration, collaboration among the localization units. And another, the second thing is the tracking, to take advantage of the mobility of the sensor node. So the collaboration, the idea of collaboration is really coming from a sensor network. In typical sensor network system, um, we have like a bunch of um, nodes, sensor nodes. Each one of the nodes has limited capacity in sensing in communication in computation, but then the sensor nodes distribute in a large area, then collaborate through through like multi-hop communication, through mesh networking to, um, to relay the information, to help each other to achieve um, a lot more than each one of the nodes can achieve. So in large scale sensor network, the collaboration is really the key um, to, um, to do much more than one node can do. Um, then if we look at collaboration more, um, more in more details, the collaboration can be done in sensing and also can be done in, in, um, in processing. But the purpose of collaboration is quite different in sensing and the, and the uh, processing. In sensing, we want to do the collaboration to provide much larger sensing um, coverage or to achieve much better like, sensing capabilities, like more um, uh, than um, the collaboration is done to uh, exploit diversities among the sensor nodes, for example, um, for um, multiple sensing modality or redundancy, redundancy in network the system, or many other like system or environmental conditions. Then collaboration in processing is to uh, share the processing load because each one of the nodes has uh, limited uh, capabilities in CPU. So if you want to do a lot of computation for the algorithm, then you have to share the load among the, among the distributed sensor nodes to, to do that uh, computation. So then in the context of localization, the meaning of uh, collaborative, collaborative localization really means in contrast to um, the traditional ways of doing localization, meaning like in GPS, in GPS, we have the GPS receiver and then a bunch of like, GPS satellites. The receiver depends on satellites to do the localization of the receiver. But in collaborative localization, the receivers, the localization units can talk to each other, then can help each other to do, the, uh, to do localization. So can help each other to achieve much better performance for all of the nodes that involved. And then 
um, this makes it possible to uh, to uh, solve or uh, or maybe um, improve some of the things that we encounter in localization in localization systems. Um, for example, one one major thing, one major challenge in localization system is the uh, geometric conditioning, um, which means uh, the performance or the accuracy of the localization depends on the geometry formed by the localization unit and the reference node. So that means at different, for example, inside this room, at different points, you may get a different performance. So that, that, that means the geometry is playing a, a major role. So, but by collaborating the nodes, by collaborating the nodes, so if we have several nodes in the room, then maybe one of the nodes has very bad reception of the signal, whatever signal that is, GPS or Wi-Fi or whatever signal. But, but there's a better chance other nodes in the room may have better, better reception of the signal, better performance for localization. So if the nodes can share that information, if the nodes can make a measurement between themselves, then we can make use of those information to, to help achieve much better performance for the whole system. So, so that's the basic idea of the collaborative uh, localization. And then, <clears throat> then another major thing that we can um, measure characteristics of the uh, localization unit that we can take advantage of is the mobility of the, of the node. In a lot of applications, the, the target or the uh, localization unit is, is on the move, it's moving. Then as it moves, just similar to like a multiple sensor in the, in the same room, so if the node moves, maybe at one point the reception of the signal is very poor, but maybe next moment the reception becomes good. And then in the, in, on top of that, by taking measurements in sequential, so you get a, a sequence of like time, uh, a, a sequence of measurements that you can, that are correlated, correlated through, um, through the motion. So we can take advantage of this by, by doing tracking. And then, so we put, put this collaboration and tracking together, we have this, uh, something we call it collaborative multi-sensor tracking. So we want to do uh, multi-sensor, mul multiple mobile sensor tracking uh, inside challenging indoor environment, inside the multi-pass environment. So the, the, the application scenario that I um, put on the slides is one for, for example, firefighters. And if you think about typical firefighter uh, application scenario, when, when there's a fire, so firefighter comes in, so what may happen is the, um, the reference nodes, the real calibrated, uh, real synchronized reference nodes has to be outside. Outside maybe, may, no, almost always on the like fire trucks. It cannot go inside. Then firefighters take the mobile units, go inside, and the task is to to locate those mobile units or the firefighters. So by placing the reference node outside building, we may be able to like, create dead spots inside the building because the, um, the signal has to penetrate inside from the reference node on the fire trucker. It has to go inside the building. Then you have to penetrate several walls. So there's a larger chance there are many dead spots inside the building but when several mobile units go inside, and if they can help each other, they can collaborate with each one of the node can be, can act as a pseudo reference node for other nodes. So we are taking a pseudo reference node inside the building to where it's needed. And then, um, um, so, so the problem, the problem of, um, um, collaborative multi-sensor checking can be uh, like formulated nicely within like Bayesian estimation framework, and it can be uh, uh, formulated as uh, estimation problem to estimate both the, the state states of um, of the node, including uh, position and maybe velocity of the node. 
and we want to estimate multiple sensor nodes at the same time and by taking advantage of the measurements between the nodes, between the nodes. So in traditional ways of um, uh, localization, the, the localization units only make use of the measurements from the node and the reference node. The measurements between the mobile units are not used in tradi traditional ways of localization. But in here we, we, do, um, we do peer measurements among the peer units, we do measurements for, for example, for arranging uh, time of arrival, receive signal strength, those all can be measured between the uh, mobile units. And this information is added information that can, um, can be used to improve the localization performance. So this is one of the, um, uh, one example that we uh, did simulation. So in here we have uh, four reference nodes outside on the boundary, four reference nodes, and then four mobile units going inside. It's moving inside, it's building. And the models, the channel models we use is for multi-pass channel. Uh, then the fifth and sixth, um, so in total we have, we have six sensor nodes, four are mobile, two are stationary. The stationary sensor node can be uh, can be thought of as some units. The firefighter can uh, take and, and drop it along the way because, because if you can place some of the nodes along the way, then uh, that can be part of this um, estimation problem too. So that can also help to, um, to work together with other nodes, other mobile nodes. Then um, we, we, we are very interested in finding out like quantitatively how much we can gain from collaboration, how much and how much we can gain from tracking by, uh, by taking advantage of the mobility. So we, we derived <coughs> uh, performance lower bounds uh, for localization, traditional ways of localization. Um, it's criminal low bound and then for tracking, there's a similar thing which is called a posterior criminal lower bound. So we derived all those and co compare the performance of lower bound for four different ways of doing localization, localization and tracking. The first set of data is for non-collaborative localization. It, it's just like a GPS, like you have one mobile unit, but the mobility is not, not taken into consideration. At, at each time, unit, time instance, you make a measurement between the unit and the reference nodes, and then you use those information to do positioning, to do localization. So that's called a non-collaborative localization on the, on the top left. And then um, the results, um, So this bunch of results is for non-collaborative localization, and then uh, different trace of results is for different sensor nodes. We have six, sen six sensor nodes, and then we can see for two stationary ones, it, they stay at the same location, so the performance doesn't change over time. So this is time axis, index of the trajectory. But for the mobile units, as they pass through the building, at different location, the performance is different because of this geometric conditioning and because of the uh, signal it's receiving at different location are different. And then if we do non-collaborative tracking by using, uh, um, we are using particle filters, not common filter. Particle filter is, uh, is one variant of ways of implementing Bayesian estimation uh, method, algorithms. So if we do non-collaborative tracking, so that means the mobile units are doing tracking uh, by itself. So it do, it, the mobile unit is doing measurements from itself to the reference node and only using that information, the measurement between the mobile units are not utilized. So we are only doing tracking individually. Th then initially, initially it's same as localization, but as time passes on, then you collect more data along the way, 
and then the, the tracking effects become kick in, then the performance can be um, greatly improved. So by the end, by the end, then you can see this is the trajectory that we simulated. Then by the end, the performance really can drop to around the, around the two meters, and this is around the 10 meter. Then these two set of results is for collaborative localization and the collaborative tracking. For collaborative localization, we are not doing tracking. We are making use of the margin between the mobile units, but, but the um, time sequence of measurement at each individual node is not utilized. We only do uh, every instant, we collect a, a bunch of measurements and do the localization collectively. Then comparing this to non-collaborative localization, we can see quite a major difference. We can improve the performance by collaborating the unknown sensor nodes. Even those, especially one, even those that you put along the way, which is not moving, but you just put it along the way to help you, to help you locate. And then the fourth set of the results is the collaborative tracking. So with several four mobile units and two stationary units, we do collaborative tracking on those all six sensor nodes. Then the performance compared this with this, we can see there's again improvement. Improvement relatively it's not too much, but it's um, it's about um, almost like a, above two meter to three meter to below two meter uh, accuracy um, that you can achieve using collaborative tracking. So by doing this, we are uh, trying to quantitative, quantitatively measure how much we can gain from collaboration among the mobile units and how much we can gain by doing the tracking individually and the collaboratively. So this is a performance bound that we uh, derived. Then we also uh, implemented the collaborative multi-sensor tracking uh, method using particle filters. And as I said earlier, particle filter is one way of implementing Bayesian estimation technique. And it's, um, uh, it's very flexible, very flexible. Um, um, it can deal with um, a lot of different um, scenarios, including Gaussian, non-Gaussian. Uh, for karma filtering, it has a problem of uh, assuming, or uh, it deals with uh, Gaussian, um, Gaussian uh, uh, distribution only. And, and of course, there's a extended common filters, and other type of common filter can deal with that too. Uh, but particle filters uh, are known to be more flexible. But of course, it has um, um, the different issues, like higher computational load to implement the particle filters. Um, so we did some, um, some design, designed a new uh, variants of particle filter to, to achieve uh, better performance as compared to the traditional particle filters. So uh, I'm not going to go into all the details of how the algorithm works, but the two that diverges is the, the like original particle filter. Then the one we designed is um, is the has the better performance and it, it tr tracks uh, quite well with the performance bound. The red line is the performance bounds, posterior criminal bound, and the one we uh, designed, uh, of course, a, a different scenario that performs differently. So in most of the cases, it tracks the performance low bound quite closely. Um, and and then. <coughs> The, we also did, so did this performance is for, um, for centralized processing all, of all the measurements. So meaning the mobile units will collect all the measurements and send to, uh, through, through mesh networking, send it to control station outside on the file truck, then does all the computation outside. The, so if then we also did like a distributed implementation of particle filters, which is I didn't include in this uh, slides. But there's a ways to implement the particle filters distributed. So um, 
then it may suffer a little bit in performance, but it's doable to, um, to implement a light way. Um, then um, I intentionally left out all the like, math math mathematical derivations of the performance bounds and everything. Uh, but uh, if you're interested, you can find all the details in um, some of the papers that we published earlier. Um, so that, that concludes my talk. All right.